This is a video I didn't want to make and we're going to be talking about the iFlight Commando 8 and the Jumper T Pro. The reason why this is a video that I don't want to make is we're actually going to be having a hard and difficult conversation. Let's start with the Commando 8 because Wes Vardy, who's on the Express LRS development team, has made this public announcement on behalf of the developers on the ELRS Facebook group. The key points are the dev team were not supplied with samples to ensure the product works 100% correctly, and that some prototype PCBs that were sent required changes and they're unable to confirm whether or not those have been implemented. And whilst they've made an attempt to work with the Express LRS team, they've accepted pre-orders and from what I also understand have started to ship products that haven't had that final sign off from the Express LRS team to ensure they're completely working. And it's really a public service announcement to say buyer beware, we haven't verified this particular product, so we can't guarantee that you're not going to run into issues like you have if you bought a T-Pro. G'day, Editor Darren here in post-production. And Zoo from t Flight has actually commented on the post on the Express LRS Facebook page. I'm gonna read it in full for your benefit. Gotta clear up a bit by the post. First, I'd say I'm sorry that our team mess up things. We want to show respect to the dev team and we didn't want to skip the confirmation with the dev team, but we had the bad organization of sending the prototypes to the dev team. There was a lack of communication among our marketing team, engineering team and me, so the prototypes sent to a few reviewers while not dev team members. We should send to dev team members first to test and confirm, and then reviewers. Secondly, we have stopped sending to review and order before the dev team makes proof, and we found there is a gimbal jitter and fixed it in our test. So we will ship a whole new radio kit to dev team members in 10 days. Finally, I'd say sorry again, we mess up. Zoo, team iFlight. Played at iFlight for putting up their hand and saying that they've made a mistake and also acknowledging how that mistake came about, as well as specifying the actions that they're gonna to take to remedy the, the problem. But more importantly, I think the thing that they're doing right in this instance is they're pulling the product from launch and fixing it so that what the consumers do receive as opposed to what the reviewers have are actually gonna be a decent product that is worth the price. After all, the Commando 8 isn't gonna be a cheap product when you look at the pricing. The second comment is that the FPV community, well, you're not stupid. I would dare say there are going to be a lot of people in the community saying that iFlight, you're only apologizing and acknowledging the errors because you've been publicly caught and publicly called out for these mistakes. Had you had the customer in mind from the very beginning, you would have taken the time to get these things right and not necessarily made these errors. That being said, my personal view is that when I make a mistake at work and I know I've completely messed up, whether that's with my customers, or with other people in the business, I'm gonna be the one being proactive in order to take the necessary remedies to fix that particular problem. So maybe the benefit of the doubt is warranted in this situation. I'll leave that up to you to decide. But it certainly isn't warranted for someone like Jumper, who to this date haven't responded. So this now leads us to the Jumper T Pro and the issues I've had with it. I was really excited about the Jumper T Pro because I thought it was the one they should have made a year ago. So I went and pre-ordered the Jumper T Pro and the one I chose was the JP4 in one with the External Express LRS module. The issue I have is not that this was a product that they released, it was more that there was a product that they didn't actually announce. Jumper waited until the T Pro was practically in everyone's hands before coming out with saying, hey, we're doing an internal module. But the way they went about the launch of the internal Express LRS version made me feel as a customer like they had deceived me. Like, couldn't you have told me this up front and I would have made the right buying decision? But the kicker is it came in $40 cheaper than the one they announced previously. And you could justify and say, hey, that extra 40 bucks is worth it. And if you have the use case where you're gonna need an internal multi-protocol module and maybe the external Express LRS module, then it's gonna be worth it. And I don't doubt there are gonna be buyers in the market that that is gonna suit their particular needs. And then there's the implementation of Express LRS on their radio. And because they didn't work with the Express LRS developers, one of the key things they've missed out is how to recover from a failed flash. So what this means is that if you're updating via Wi-Fi and the flash fails for whatever reason, there's no way to recover it without an extensive deconstruction process and some external hardware. Now Tweet FPV has gone through and used a FTDI adapter in order to recover it. And he's got a great video on how to do that. So I'd encourage you to check it out. There is a link in the description. The Express LRS development team have also figured out a way around it where you don't need that FTDI adapter. But again, it's a pretty detailed process to go through just for something that should be as simple as plugging it in via USB and pressing build and flash. 
You're probably thinking, well, why are these just big concerns? They're all part and parcel of having an open source platform. But the bigger issue at hand is really around customer support. When I buy a product from a manufacturer, I'm expecting that that manufacturer will provide me warranty and provide me service. But because people have issues, they don't go back to these manufacturers, they go to Facebook. They go to the Express LRS group, they go to FPV Life, they go to Beginner to FPV, they just go to any Facebook group that they're a member of, ask a question hoping to get a result. Because let's face it, the community does a better job at responding to support issues than the manufacturers do responding to support tickets, which is wrong. If you're going to sell a product and take people's money and make a profit, you should at least be prepared to do the right thing and build it correctly in the first place and then service your customers afterwards. It shouldn't be up to the Express LRS developer team to go and fix all of these problems in the radio. I want to wrap up with this. If you're looking at buying the Jumper T Pro, you do so at your own risk and you're running the gauntlet that if you do have issues, the manufacturer isn't going to back you and that you could be up for a bit of a painful process to recover your radio and actually get something to work, which should have just worked straight out of the box. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Till next time, hopefully you'll be able to send it.